So your next big project is you, Chris, starts to attend to other things beyond the things I've been working on at work and in my career. All of a sudden, there's another time out in my life. And it's like uh, I heard this in an interview. Uh, I was watching an old YouTube this weekend, Chris, and it was uh, President Obama, you know, with the in Chicago, the new presidential library. And he was on one of the TV shows and I in, in the uh, newscaster said, so what's the next act for you, mm. Mr. President? And it's the same thing that I'm talking about here. For many people, it's like, what's the next act? What's your next project? And guess what? I believe from all my work and you know, where I'm at, I'm 66 years old now, and I've done a lot in my life, but you know what? There's a next act. There's a next big project. And in this case, it's for people to think about what's really important to them right now and the things they want to be working on to make a difference to themselves first and to others next. Most of us never learned how to train our brains, which is why most of us needlessly settle, struggle, and worse, suffer. My name is Chris Doris, and I want to make brain training mainstream. This is my series, Tough Talks, Conversations on Mental Toughness. I'm interviewing badasses from all walks of life on what mental toughness means to them and their unique approaches to strengthening their minds. Hey everyone, welcome back to Tough Talks, Conversations on Mental Toughness. I am your host, Chris Doris. And before I introduce today's guest to you, our one, uh, as always, housekeeping item is, if you are not receiving the daily dose mental toughness tips in 30 seconds or less, every single day in your inbox, around 6 a.m., wherever you are on the globe, if you're not getting notifications of my Tuesday blog posts, and if you're not getting notification of these new Tough Talks podcast episodes, then let's fix that up, shall we, by going to ChristopherDoris.com backslash lists, L-I-S-T-S. Name, email, boom. You get all the goodies. All right. Our guest today is, uh, is a close friend of mine. Um, I'm happy to finally have him on the podcast. His name is Leo Pusateri. And uh, I'm going to read you his bio, but then I'm going to give you my bio of him my testimonial to him and why I wanted to share him with you. So Leo is president, owner, and author of Pusateri Consulting and Training. Passionate, inspirational, and motivating are words many would use to describe Leo. It's accurate. Affectionately known as the value man in the financial services industry, he's also recognized as the industry's premier partner of value-based training, not only by senior leaders in the C-suites, but among top advisors as well. When it comes to knowing, pricing, selling, and living your value, Leo's time-honored and proprietary programs are in place around the world. This is a credible testament to his knowledge capital that he enthusiastically shares with clients. I can testify to that as well. His travels find him working across the country and around the globe with senior leadership teams to financial entrepreneurs who represent broker deals, dealers, RIAs, investment management firms, private banks, family offices, insurance companies, and more. Through Leo's robust training programs, firms have endorsed Leo's skill set as the absolute best in class in bringing value-based training on the table. Yeah, okay, I mean, that, that's impressive as hell, right? But I gotta tell you, if you ask the question, what really qualifies this dude to serve people? My answer is his unparalleled passion for serving, his love of humans, his belief in human potential and his commitment to having people's lives be better. That, that's, I mean, there, that's it. to me, that's his like quadruple PhD. The dude is full of love. I love that he's here and I get to share him with you today. He's here. Let's go find him. Where are you at, buddy? <laughs> Found him. There he is. Leo Pusateri in 
Beautiful Buffalo, buddy. Beautiful Buffalo. <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> I've never heard. Know, I've known you for how long? How long have I known you? Yeah, it's going on a decade now, I believe. Yeah, maybe more than that. Yeah. And, I, and I, we were talking about this the other day. So obviously, Leo lives in beautiful Buffalo. And I can't even just say Buffalo when I'm talking to him. I've never heard Leo just say the term, the name of the city, Buffalo, by itself, ever. I don't think you say, I don't think you say it. Well, you, you realize, about Chris. Wings. You, you realize how much abuse that I've taken over the years in my travels that people say, why do you live in Buffalo? I said, because Buffalo is beautiful. And I said, where else can you live? And, and, and I said, be it's from your start deal where you work out, your country club, the kids' schools. I said, hey, no tornadoes, no volcanoes, no earthquakes, no fires. <laughs> no no volcanoes. Here and there. It's no wild, no fire. No said, volcanoes. What's the big deal here? What's the yeah. big deal? It's not a big deal. Beautiful Buffalo. Beautiful Buffalo. Yeah, you don't even have haboobs up there. <laughs> <laughs> and you know you know what a haboob is because you spent no, some I time don't. here in the desert the dust storms the dust that's correct that's right correct. the haboob yep yeah so uh you're you've you're up to some new stuff here and i want to talk all about it okay i want people i want my tough tough talks tribe to um understand what you're up to your next big project right yeah i love it for those it's you for those that um are only listening to this podcast, I'm holding up right now a copy of Leo's latest book, not his first book, his most recent book. And this one is entitled exactly what he's up to these days, which is your next big project is you. Seven steps to self-discovery for successful people. Leo, <clears throat> let's take a second to uh, let folks know who are we really speaking to today? Who are the people that you really want to hear this? Chris, the ideal audience I've defined as that third season type of individual. Um, in the third season individual, most people would say is, you know, entering your 50s up till 75 range. I've got to tell you, though, the principles in your next big project to you are needed by millennials or any age level. And the only reason I focus more on that um, third season folk is because I felt in my heart, and I've, this has been proven to me, Chris, is that I believe if you've got a little well of experience, you've worked long enough, you've been beaten around, you've been slapped around, you've been motivated, you've climbed the corporate ladder, whatever else like this, you have some life experiences, personally and professionally, and so that's usually a, a, a time period of acquisition. And some of the people that I work with, and you know, I do a lot of work in the wealth management arena, coaching and training uh, folks that are trying to make a difference in people's lives and overseeing their wealth and their families and intergenerational transfer. And, and what happens, Chris, is people, you know, you know, we go from survival, you know, our first jobs, and all of a sudden we, we, we get through that first three or four or five years or so. And, all of a sudden, we're getting a little bit of security, right? You know, we, we're maybe getting married. We're putting a down payment down our first house. Where maybe the kids are starting to come. And so from survival to security to some success, holy cow, we just made a president's club or we've, we've won an award recognition. We've qualified for a trip or we're doing something else or we've achieved something. And then success eventually leads into significance, mm. right? And, and so that that crossing over point from where we've reached some level of success to all of a sudden now we're opening up the zipper on people's chest, reaching in and touching their heart and soul mm. to figure out what the hell is going on right now with your life. You've already climbed the ladder. You've done this. You have a lot. You've achieved a lot. You're around, you, you know, now it's a point that I want to be around like-minded individuals. And so being around like-minded individuals, Chris means it's really cool to be able to share that ride you took during the survival stage, the ride you took getting security, the ride that you took reaching success. And now you're at a point of saying, holy cow, what, what is next for me? Your next big project is you. And that's okay. all this stuff really Look started. You. This is not, this was not planned. 
this is all unrehearsed, folks. That's the next question. So that's the perfect segue. Dude, I tell you what, one of the things I've always loved about you since the day I met you is your damn energy, your enthusiasm, man. Love that. Love that about Passion. you. Passion never sleeps, brother. <laughs> Passion. I'm going to have a, that's going to be a future book. Type. I've already started. Passion never sleeps. I like it. And I believe that too. I believe when you're around people, they really love what they do. Um, you know, you, you love, you know, tough talks and helping people getting in their face and with the daily dose and picking up and every morning I think of you and I pick the stuff up and it gives me a, a it's like taking my morning vitamin, you know, I don't need the orange juice. I just need to read daily dose and I'm off and running you. here to do this stuff. But I, I think when you're around passionate people, it's contagious and it, it's, it's, I believe you just have to live it. You have to really love Oh, you it. do that, man. You certainly do that. All right. What does this mean? Your next big project is you. What do you mean? It, it, it's all about you. It's a, you're at that stage in your life. As I said, you've accomplished a bunch and you know what? All of a sudden, the questions, Chris, you start asking yourself mm. become different. Mm. I, I got, I got the money in the bank. I've got the the house or the second mm. house or the car I wanted or the swimming pool or whatever that whatever the heck else it is in your life. Now there are important questions around significance and what that really means. Questions about anything I've regretted. Uh, questions about abundance. I'm at a point now uh, that I've got time, talent, and treasure. Questions about gratitude. Questions about just forcing myself to think and look at life through a different lens. And I call this perspective questions around being my best questions around not just creating my legacy, but living it right now. So your next big project is you, Chris starts to attend to other things beyond the things I've been working on at work and in my career, all of a sudden there's another time out in my life. And it's like, uh, I heard this in an interview uh, I was watching an old YouTube this weekend, Chris, and it was uh, President Obama, you know, with the in Chicago, the new presidential library. And he was on one of the TV shows and I in, in the uh, newscaster said, so what's the next act for you, mm. Mr. President? And it's the same thing that I'm talking about here. For many people, it's like, what's the next act? What's your next project? And guess what? I believe from all my work and you know, where I'm at, I'm 66 years old now, and I've done a lot in my life. But you know what, there's a next act, there's a next big project. And in this case, it's for people to think about what's really important to them right now, and the things they want to be working on to make a difference to themselves first and to others next. You know what, my, all about, buddy. Well, well, I meant that brother. Okay, I love that. Uh, I don't know that I could love that anymore. Because I'm, um, you know, it's so fascinating to me. I've traveled the world, right? And uh, other cultures, there are some other cultures that aren't as, oh, neurotic as we are in the West about, you know, acquisition more for its own sake. Right? right. And I have coached a lot of people who have really rung the money bell, who have won that game in big ways and always come back to everything that you just said, which is, I don't need more money. I need meaning. Yeah. So yeah, the other the other way meaning, Chris, I've always said I just want more life. Hmm. Want more life. Right. What, you know, yeah, like, man. <clears throat> you know the coolest course I ever took was in grad school. It was on death. And one of the uh, research studies that we read about <clears throat> was with centenarians. And their answers to the question, right, like, what would you do different? <clears throat> and it's really just so interesting because people who are on death's doorstep seem to have very well-functioning bullshit filters. Like, they're just clean and clear, right? And some of the most popular responses were, one, I would take more risks. Two, mm. I would slow down and appreciate how magical life is without me having to do a damn thing. Just appreciate it. And three, I'd be, this is interesting, I would be way less obsessed with my own success and way more interested in leaving a legacy and making a difference. Bingo. Right? You nailed it. Yeah. Well, they nailed it. Yeah. Well, if you don't risk, uh, there, was a, there was a book out on that too. I read it years ago. And it ends with, if you don't risk, then you'll never grow. And if you don't grow, then what good is it uh, to do this? So the, the first piece of that, you know, 
makes total sense. Their legacy, I couldn't agree with you more in terms of making a difference. And uh, all those things are just spot on. That's exactly what I'm feeling as well. Before we get into your seven steps, right? The subtitle of the book is Seven Steps to Self-Discovery for Successful People. I want to know what the seven steps are, the wheel. But before we get into it, can you give us a little bit more on the, like, why? The backstory. What drove, what inspired you to create this? The, this, is, by the way, that book, the book, yeah, of course, the book, but your next experience, right? Which is, yeah. which is the sabbatical, the sabbatical yeah, experience, right? Can you tell us what is the sabbatical experience and, and wh why, did, why did you create it? About 25 years ago, Chris, mm -hmm. 1997 range. I uh, came up with a concept. Uh, as you know, I'm in sales consulting, sales productivity. My work, I, I did this in the 80s with the division of Xerox, arguably the finest sales consulting, sales training company in the world. At its time, I took a three-year little shift in my career into the wealth management world. And in 2000, and, no, I'm sorry, 1992, almost 30 years ago, I started my company, right? You, you'll love this because my wife said, what's the worst that could happen? I said, we'll sell the house and keep the kids. All right, I'll go find another job someplace else. I'm 37 at the time, I'm marketable and blah, blah, blah. But I created a program early on in my company. It was all the process of introspection of helping people to discover their value, right? And so the whole process of value, introspection and discovery, I came up with seven questions. Tell me, who are you? Second, what do you really do? What do you do? What's your value proposition? What makes it unique? Thirdly, why do you do what you do? What are your beliefs, your opinions, your philosophies, your wisdom, your insight, all the things that you've learned that I can know that we're philosophically connected? I want to know how I'm going to experience this. Okay, now I know you, Chris. I understand what you do. I understand philosophically. Guess what? What's next? Where do we go from here? And then who have you done this for? And then six, what makes you different? And ultimately, why should I do business with you? Look me in the eye, net it out. What's the real value? Well, Chris, I'm teaching this program, right? And all of a sudden, it felt like class after a class, many advisors would come up to me and pull me aside and say, Leo, you're really not just making me think about differentiating myself, my team, my organization, how to win business. You're really making me think about my life. You're making me think with these questions, who am I? What do I do? Is this really what I want to do? What's driving me in business or what's really driving me in my life right now? And people would come back and say, this is really a program more about life. This is not just a program about business differentiation. Make me think about my life. And guess what, Chris? What happened to me? I started living my life. I started aging and dealing with the longevity issues myself. Lost my parents, right? Lost my only brother a decade ago. Deal with cancer myself. An emergency flight with an oxygen mask on and a plane descending. And realizing I knew there was a need for this program of discovery, but more around these life issues. And, and that's, that's how it came about. It was, it was the feedback, Chris, the feedback from people that I was challenging mm. when they said, no, 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 you're making me think even more about me. That's where it all started to take off. I said, if I can create an experience for them, mm around helping them to deal with the issues as they were aging, dealing with longevity, dealing with success to significance. What were those issues? All of a sudden, the seven elements of the wheel came to me, Chris, as clearly, as precise as the seven questions of my discovery process were who, what, why, how, who, what, why. The seven elements of the wheel became that clear to me as well without even thinking twice about it because I was living it myself in addition to seeing my clients dealing with themselves and the clients that they were serving. It was mm. all a confluence mm -hmm. of all these things coming together. How, what is your answer today <clears throat> to the question when you meet someone new for the very first time and they ask you the question whether they care or not? They say, hi, oh, yeah, nice to meet you, Leo. What do you do? What's your answer today? 
<laughs> if I'm having fun, depending on. Okay. Who's yeah. Asking, Bring a fun one. <laughs> who, who's asking where they're at? I said, I actually help people just like yourself answer that very same question for yourself. Oh, uh, how fun. That's, that's a cool. fun way to do it. I read, I read <laughs> an element of that in a, in a book years ago, a guy like, uh, uh, one of the early writers of consultative selling back in the seventies. And there was, it was a similar phrase, but a lot of times it depends on who I'm talking about uh, to be conversational. I've got a 13 word formal value proposition, but I, I conversationalize things. I said, I, I work with people like yourself, or I work with people in the wealth management industry who are challenged to win mandates from people like you or your families and how to more effectively manage their wealth and to <clears throat> give them the life that they're looking for. Now, formally, if you looked in my book or on my website, it would say empowering organizations and individuals to discover, articulate, and capitalize on their unique value. Right. So there's a formal answer, but you know what? I'm not a damn robot, and I don't teach people to be robots or to be mechanical with the way they answer that question. I want people to be in the moment. I want them to be conversational. I want authenticity to come out. I want them to speak and to humanize this as best that they can. So take whatever answer that you've worked on as I would coach somebody and make it come alive to the person you're talking to. And it could change. I could, sure. I could talk to five more people. The rest of today could ask me the same question. I might give them a little different mm -hmm. version sure. of that, yeah. Okay. but that's, that's pretty much it. It's Good. to me, Chris, I, no uh, price sell, live your value. That's the space I live in. And I, and I love it. No, <laughs> you have more of these lines, man, than anyone. And you say them so damn fast. <laughs> so I got to slow you down. <laughs> All right. I'm going to put no. my feet up on my desk here. Yeah, yeah. Woo-sa. <laughs> feet up right. on my desk. Take my little uh, jacket because it's a little bit drafty and beautiful buffalo today. Whatever See? it is. But, uh, beautiful buffalo. All right. Let's talk about the wheel. Can we go there? <clears throat> yeah. Love to. And you said that these came to you with crystal clarity. All right. So the, this wheel, all right, for, again, for those who are listening, I'm holding up an illustration from from the book, your next big project is you. I believe it's page seventeen. Uh, it's a page nineteen, actually. <clears throat> All right. So these are the seven uh, seven. Tell us what this is. What is this wheel? The seven what? I know the subtitle of the book says seven steps. Are these seven steps? Yeah, seven right, steps right. to the sabbatical All right. wheel. See. All right. Take us through them in the in own, <clears throat> in the way that only Leo Pusateri can take us through. Well, the first step is uh, living a life of significance. Okay. And that's all about making a meaningful difference starting in your own life as well as in the lives of others. So we get deep into that through discussions and questions. And, you know, Chris, who do you know that's living a life of significance? I might ask you. I might say, Chris, what are some of the characteristics or traits of those people that are living lives like that in ways that mm. you admire or respect? I might also ask you, Chris, what does, uh, have you ever felt insignificant? Have you ever felt uh, levels in your life, not just of being significant, but of insignificant? Mm -hmm. And what happens is when you put people together, Chris, when you've got four or five people out of a group of 20 or my tribes, let's say, my communities, the people that I put together like this, man, magic starts to happen. When you ask the question, you, know, you just keep your mouth shut and see what some other people are answering this question. Uh, the thing, the program and the experience takes off. So that's, that's the first level, buddy. It's all about life of significance. Okay. Thank you. Um, the second one is about living a life with no regrets. And that's what I call having inner pride in what you've accomplished as well as things in your life that you want to still accomplish. And there's a couple ways that we attack this area is one is looking at it from the perspective of, are there any rocks, Chris, in your life's life backpack you and i played the two or three rounds of golf in the years looking out at beautiful vistas and mountains in the arizona area and if you think about watching some of those hikers and things like this and people have got backpacks and some people have rocks in them mm. and they're carrying things around and so i'm i'm addressing the issue of taking the rocks out as well as from the from not having any regrets and building your own bucket list of things that are important to you and being coached accordingly to achieve things in your life that would bring more significance to your life as well to do that. That's what no regrets is all about. The, the third area, abundance, it's all about intentional stewardship. In stewardship, I break down by time, number one, your talent, number two, 
and three, your treasure. And so you break down each of those areas and what can you do to make a difference by looking at stewardship from those areas? You can take it from the church and I won't get uh, political or I won't get uh, theological with anybody listening today, but you can break down our lives right now. I mean, I'll tell you one of the things I love to do, I love to help young kids. I've raised four kids. I've got five grandkids. And so many times, even in my club where people say, geez, Leo, my son or my daughter's graduating. They're trying to figure out what to do next. I said, let me talk to them. Let me get a sense of where, where hmm. what's driving them right now, what their interests are, where, what they get enthused about, what their passions are, what the things. And I love helping kids uh, that are trying to make career decisions. That's one of the little things that I do on the sides beyond just a couple of things when people say, do you have some time to help with the board or to lead the school board years ago or to be on an alumni board or other things that you know, a lot of listeners would probably do. That's why I talk about intentional stewardship. That's, that's the third area. The fourth area is about gratitude. And that's, that's having authentic appreciation. I talk about, can you imagine living Thanksgiving every day of your mm. life? Oh, every God. day, Chris. Oh, living as if it's damn Thanksgiving <laughs> to do this. And one of the exercises that I love, <clears throat> and I've been doing this myself, is I help people to create their top 100 list. Mm. And we go down the list in terms of your mentors, people who've made a difference in your life, uh, could have been a coach, could have been a teacher, could have been a parent, could have been an aunt, an uncle, a friend, whoever. I don't really care. But the important thing is, have you told them? And in, in the experience, I bring letterhead, envelopes, stamps. When people say, no, I'm going to do that someday, guess what? Yeah, you're going to do it. You're damn right you're going to do it. You're going to do it right now. <laughs> and so I literally take a half an hour in the experience. And I'm telling you, you could hear a pin drop, Chris, people writing. I said, I want you to think about this in the world of our technology. If you've received an email, ever received a text, or you received a handwritten note from somebody, even to this day, maybe I'm old fashioned, but I said, I want you to write this in your writing, your handwriting, yeah. and I want somebody to be able to open this up. In my closet right up here, there are two boxes, Nike shoe boxes filled with notes that I've received over the last three decades of my four decades of my sales career. I don't throw any away. And I realized how important they were to me. And I realized that in return, I am doing that slowly, checking off my top 100 list to let people know, to thank them from the bottom of my heart of the impact and the things that they did to help me to become the person I am today as a better father, as a better grandfather, as a better husband, as a better friend, as a better community member, people that influenced me in different ways in the roles in my life, Chris, I wanted to let them know now rather than when it's too late. Okay. That's part of gratitude. That's Thank so spectacular. <clears throat> that's so great. I mean, that that's a, let's just slow that down for a second. I mean, if you don't take anything else out of this entire conversation, which of course you will, but slow that down. I mean, there's a, there's a takeaway, right? There's a, there's an invitation for, for unbelievably worthwhile to do. Right. <clears throat> Top 100 list. Who are the greatest influences, influencers in your life? And if they're still alive, let them know. Let with them know. A, but, with a handwritten but, note. Yeah, but better yet, a handwritten note, because I'm telling you, yeah. I've been around a few people that have pulled out their notes that I wrote them years ago. Mm. They literally said, Leo, you wouldn't even remember this. But you know, they might say, do you remember? I got this. And they look at the date. They said, you sent me this, let's say, 10 years ago or you know, eight years ago or three years ago, or whatever. I, you know what, Leo? I read it often. So it meant a lot to me. Yeah. And I, I want to let people know um, because I know what it feels like. All right. So the fifth area is on perspective. Okay. And that's about increasing your sensitivity to what do you have and what you don't have. I don't know if I ever told you, Chris. I was invited to be a faculty member in a program in Denver years ago. Hmm. My buddy called me and it was like 20 top sales folks in the wealth management arena, institutional and really high net worth focused. And 
what he had in the room was I, I walk into this hotel and I'd known him. He talked to me. And there was a wheelchair in the room. There was a, um, a blindfold. There was a set of crutches. Um, and what would happen is like during the first break, all of a sudden he'd say, Chris, here, take these crutches. And I want you to go up the street here. There's a Starbucks at the end of the corner there. And here, here's 20 bucks and get yourself something and bring me back a uh, latte or coffee or whatever else like this and go and use the crutches. Or he put somebody in a wheelchair and he'd say, I want, hey, uh, Leo, you go with Chris and I want you to assist Chris if necessary. Or he put a blindfold on somebody to simulate not having sight or being able to walk or whatever. Yeah. Increased yeah. sensitivity. Yeah. One of the last nights, Chris, we went to a women's prison in mm -hmm. Colorado. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, I'd never been to a prison before, men or women. And all of a sudden, we go in the cafeteria after checking in with our ID and everything, and the door opens, and all these women inmates come into the cafeteria. And the only rule, we, get, we had 90 minutes, and the only rule was there were no rules. We could ask whatever we wanted to. And he asked me to lead the debriefing the next day to focus on listening skills, empathy, acknowledgments, clarifying, confirmation. I'm sitting there with pretty successful people looking to the table next to me with a woman inmate and, and all of a sudden tears streaming down somebody's face. And I'm sitting there with a 19 year old Mexican young girl who had two girls, you know, by that age already. And she's in prison with a drug issue. And, and, and Chris, the last day we had a, a minister come in to talk about perspective from a different angle and stuff like this. Perspective is increasing sensitivity to what we have and what others do not have and what we can do to continue to make a difference. It might be handing out those turkeys at Thanksgiving, Chris. It might be working a food kitchen. It might be giving up our time to somebody in need. It might be picking up something, you know, giving an umbrella, you know, driving by and seeing somebody that's raining out, the homeless person. It's, it's increasing your sensitivity in areas to up the level of your game. And I'm telling you, when you're with like-minded people, and you're sharing like in your tribe to say, let me tell you something happened to me. Or, let me tell you something I witnessed. Or, let me tell you something that broke my heart. Or let me tell you something where I know I did something. I had a smile on my face. That's what that module is about. Becoming your best is having committed focus. You have to be best Chris Doris or anybody listening in your tribe. Look in your mirror, folks, because you have to be best you first. You can't be best father, best dad, best mother, best son, best daughter, best grandmother, grandfather, best whatever it is, the roles in your life, unless you're best you first. Mm. So we get people worry and thinking about different elements from wellness to mindfulness integration to looking at different things and bring some expertise in the experience to people to give some different perspectives there. And the last piece is this. It's the visioning. It's about making a genuine impact. It's about living your legacy. And I tell people right now, it's not a matter of putting your name on your college. Like I've sent thousands of dollars down to my university to buy a block for our new building or to our church and things like this. It's, it's becomes even more tangible now about what can you do to live it now? Like, like, how do you want to be known in my discovering your value business program? It's like, I ask people, I said, what's your reputational value? How do people talk about you when you're not around? Are you leaving a presence in your absence? Mm. You know, when that day comes when the tribe is gone and people are going to be talking about you, Chris, or me, or your tribe members here and stuff like this, I'd ask each of them, is that how are you known now? You break it down by your roles. Um, have you really made an impact? What can you do to change to make a difference? When you bring all seven of these together, Chris, fasten your seatbelt. It's, it's a, an emotional ride. And I tell people, unless you're willing to coach others, mm. unless you're willing to be coached yourself, unless you're willing to be vulnerable mm. and to be opening up and not holding back, you'll, you'll maybe get more out of this than anything else that you might have experienced. And that was my goal, was to create something world-class and something that people would leave and say, you know what? That was absolutely the most impactful personal experience I've ever had in my life. Mm. And I don't want it to end. And that's, and that's my goal. And that's, that's what I did with the program. And 
I'm living it every day now and I'm trying to do my best to help people like you and your tribe members and people in my life. But it starts with me. I got to be better, best Leo to help others. And I'm challenged. That's why I read the daily dose every day, brother. <laughs> it's, gets me up and running, man. I had a baby. So that was amazing. Uh, <clears throat> so why do you call this experience the sabbatical experience? Have you ever taken one yourself? I, I don't know. I bet you if we polled your tribe right now, and we said, how many of you have been ever been able to take a sabbatical? I'd be uh, willing to put high odds similar to the Buffalo Bills beating the Philadelphia Eagles this easy, year. We easy, easy. We're off to a good start today, buddy. I, I, would, uh, I would put high odds that the uh, most people would say they never had a chance to experience or to, to go on one. Unless you're in academia or unless you work for a cool company that says, hey, every three or five or 10 years, we're going to have you take three months off to go and climb that mountain or to write your book or to just do whatever you want to do and just sit on a beach or think or read or do whatever. Most people never had a chance to take one. So I said, you know what? I'm going to call the program the sabbatical experience because people have asked me, you mean I got to take three months or a year off? I said, no, it's just the name of it. Because I want you to feel like you're taking time for yourself. Okay. With no, that, other no, like that makes perfect people. sense. Okay. And that's how I came up with that. Now that makes okay. So that thank you <clears throat> because that makes perfect damn sense. I yeah. don't know that I was clear on what the term sabbatical. I know what a sabbatical is, but I don't know. I didn't. I don't know if I would have been able really to define it if you had asked me to, to ten minutes ago. So yeah. so really, like it's taking the time to slow down to answer the most important questions. In your life. Yeah, I, I've got a uh, deck here. I'd have to go off screen for a second, but I could show you a deck, literally of 57 card questions that I've come up with. And yeah, go, go, these, ahead. go ahead. Go get those. We use, we use these in the program. So, you know, you're, you're showing you're showing the book there, but the, the book, the book is, you know, <laughs> so. Oh, yeah. For each, for, for each area, Chris, if you see, if you pick a topic, Chris, pick a one topic? of the seven areas. Pick, oh, pick oh well, uh, okay, element. yeah, uh, gratitude. Seven elements of the wheel. Gratitude. Gratitude. So I would go and find the gratitude cards here. There's a bunch of cards here with that color, right? And so imagine in a program where you're with like-minded people, and I'll say, hey, Chris, uh, let's. you ask the first question to John over there in your, in your tribe. And you look at John and you say, what are you most grateful for? And you stop. I can guarantee you people start to think health, family, friends, whatever. We start talking this thing out. I say, all right, John, you ask the next question to Susie over here. What do you pre this is this question? What do you appreciate the most that you have in your personal life? Is there something, the next question is something in your life that you've experienced that you were ungrateful for? Now, years later, you are grateful for. Mm, I like that one. So they're, they're questions, what will you commit to do to live Thanksgiving every day? How lucky or fortunate are you when you consider the blessings in your life? One of the members of my work team and faculty on Thanksgiving Day a couple of years ago, after he went through the program, when his kids came to the Thanksgiving table, he had all the cards lined up. Aww. And so what they did for each member of the family, they picked a card, <laughs> not just pick, could you pass the stuffing and the mashed potatoes, please, <laughs> and like a little extra gravy, but they, they went through the card deck and asking questions of each other of how can we bring gratitude into our life or to our family on a daily basis? Or are there traditions you have near and dear to your heart? Well, wait, where do people get the, I didn't, I think you showed me those or told me about those when we had dinner last but um, where do people get that deck? In the program, brother. Okay. <laughs> it's, All right. Yeah, it's part of their participants. So they get, you know, they get a book. They get their, they get a journal like this. The journal's designed to work with the, the materials and the, the book concept and things. So we're, uh, you know, this, 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 it's all together for sure. attendees of our experience and things. And, this you about know, experience. Now, where? I'm, so, go ahead, no, man. No, I'm sorry, Chris. Go. Well, I'm, I'm the interviewer. I'm supposed to be listening. So I just interrupted you. What were you I was going to tell you about traditions. Okay. There's, a, there's a, traditions, adages. It's, it's amazing what comes out of the program. Um, my kids are now 38, as of this podcast, 38, 
35, 31-year-old daughters, 26-year-old son as of today, right? For 38 years, 37 years, whatever it is, 37 or 38 years, it was the night before Christmas, the book, on Christmas Eve, every night when my daughter was an infant in my arms, I read her that book. Mm. To this day, 38 years later, we've even been separated because I have a son and was in Phoenix, is in Seattle now, a daughter was in D.C., daughter in Cleveland, daughter in Pittsburgh. We've called in, if we weren't together, whoever wasn't there, and assigned a, each, each kid got assigned a page or two to read through the book as a family. Wow. And you know, when I talk about traditions that are near and dear, it's something to somebody might say, what are you, crazy? I say, no, because you know what happens now every Christmas, every Christmas Eve? One of my kids will say, Dad, what time are we doing the reading? Yeah. What time are we getting together? Because I would sit by the fireplace and I would become, you know, Leo the Big Ham or Big Jerk at the time. Like, you know, I'd make a big thing and say, welcome to the 10th reading or the welcome now to our 35th reading, which was the <laughs> night before Christmas. And I got kids there like making fun of me or, you know, it's like, or just, just, but you know what? They're never going to forget it. Right. And so I encourage your tribe is think about the traditions in your family, whatever they might be. Mm. Uh, do you have any? Mm. If you don't, I bet you there's something um, that, that probably you would think about with a smile on your face. Those of you that do have a tradition or many that you do go into a game together, watching something, doing something you know, on a Sunday afternoon together. It's a fan. There's something that you do. And that's what I'm talking about. Things like this that come out of gratitude and, and um, making people think more and more about it, buddy. So good, man. Brother, I can just listen to you all damn day. Yeah. Oh, so where do people find out? Where does the sabbatical experience occur? We're launching the next program virtually okay. on January 25th, 2022, based on okay. this podcast. Yeah. So we're just taking uh, folks uh, signing up as we speak. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we're hoping to reach a class, any low end 12, but upwards of 20 individuals. That's what we had in our last program, Chris. We launched this out in, uh, you know, your backyard there in the Scottsdale vicinity. Yeah. And then COVID hit. Yeah. And so I said, I'm not going to be a victim because I saw the power in the program. And what came out of it were a lot of the attendees and many of them have said, geez, I've got to bring my clients to this or whatever. And then put us on hold and still on hold. And so I said, I'm not going to be a victim to this. I'm going to live my passion about helping people to make a difference. I licensed the platform out of Europe. I hired an instructional designer in Michigan. I went to reimagine, rethink the journey virtually. Mm. And uh, mm. we're ready to launch it in the end of January. At, Beautiful. Uh, upcoming January. Or awesome. the end of uh, you know, next next year. Yeah. So where do people go to learn about it more? To, to go to the website, to sabbatical up? In the Pusateri Consulting, P-U-S-A-T-E-R-I, uh, Pusateri Consulting, or the sabbatical experience.com. You can go on there. You can find out a little bit more. There's a couple of videos that you can watch as well. You can look. If you've got some interest, you can give us a call. Um, the price of the journey, Chris, is $12,500. It's a nine-month learning journey, an opening event, one month for each of the seven elements of the wheel, a capstone event which I'm hoping we can bring people back to the desert someday. And the reason people say, well, why not Florida or the ocean or whatever? So we can do that if you want to go there. I don't really care, but it's got to be a place of, of, uh, a, of a, uh, a feeling of inspiration mm. of, of, of like looking and feeling, you know, I could do this at a holiday inn or a motel six by the airport in any city in the country, but there's something different about looking up at the mountains or the water or some type of scenery in realizing the beauty of our of our earth and, and the, how privileged we are to be living in it, that we can be looking and feeling. And so I like to yeah. create an, an inspirational setting to get people inspired about mm. who they can really become. Do you know what? Uh, so when we played golf last, we played at your place, Troon. Yeah. Do you know what my most memorable moment of that round of golf is maybe looking at a particular vista or mountaintop the one you you had everyone in the group slow down and have a look at 
That yeah, I remember exactly. better than it. Well, the, the, I almost had a hole in one that day. That was memorable. <laughs> but but yeah. But honest to God, <clears throat> that when you said, "Hey, everybody, come here, come up on this tee box, just look." I and, want you to look, and we all and just, we just all just shut up, in. and we all just looked, and it was spectacular. So you live that, yeah, brother. Exactly. You live that. You know, I want to give a shout out to the great Huskini. Yeah, because if not for him, I wouldn't know you. John Hoskins. And I call him uh, my brother Hoskini, the great Hoskini. That's what I said, the great Hoskini. That's my nickname. And uh, for if, if, if he hopefully listens to this someday, J John has made a difference in your life and in my life. Mm -hmm. He's one of those guys who lives the sabbatical principles. I'm proud to say that he came to the event, the last one we had, to support me. But also because John's a lifelong learner. He's got amazing intellectual curiosity. Mm. He wants to be around cool people. And that's what we put together. Uh, but I second that shout out to the great Hoskini for yeah. the guy I truly love in my life and has made a difference in mine. Amen. Thank you, John. Now, you. don't you have one of your uh, children working for Salesforce? A future, uh, my future daughter-in-law marrying my son. Right on. Right on. Proud to say that as well. Yeah. Cool. Great, uh, great young lady that's uh, that uh, won a job opportunity out of 12 people they're interviewing. And I, I believe they chose two and, uh, and she was selected. We're really proud of her and she's off and running with us. Well, congratulations. Amazingly world world class global brand these days. So, well, there are a lot of people in the Tough Talks tribe that uh, work at Salesforce. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. Good yeah. deal. Well, congratulations to her. Amazing company. Thank you, Chris, thank you very much. You're amazing, brother. You really are amazing. Thank you so much for you, for your friendship, and for the contribution that you make to the world. It's huge. Yeah, I wouldn't. Uh, I want to thank you for giving me this opportunity just to uh, speak from my heart and my soul about things that are important to me, and just doing my best to make a difference in my own life and the life of others. And, and you, and that's what I'm going to do for the rest of my life. So, okay. thank you very much, Chris. Amen, thank brother. You. Appreciate you, man. Thank you. I love that dude. <laughs> you know, you're, we, it didn't come up in our conversation today, but I made a contribution at one of his events back in the day. It was here in Scottsdale, and it was at the Four Seasons, a really fancy venue. <laughs> and, um, man, you know, looking at him, I, you know, I've known him for a long time on a personal level. Of course, we talk a ton of business, right? But, uh, wow, you know, watching that man and his element, just uh, amazing. He's so truly passionate. I think you may have picked up on that. <laughs> and he's passionate about serving humans. And that's why I love him so much. He's so good at what he does. And it's all driven by love for people and his desire for people's lives to be better, even better. All right, folks, I hope you uh, took a lot out of that. And uh, as always, thanks for tuning in to Tough Talks. Until next time. Great miracles.